NASCAR Cup Series qualifying is officially concluded from Bristol Motor Speedway, and Alex Bowman has won his first poll of 2024. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. As I just said a second ago, NASCAR Cup Series qualifying is officially concluded from Bristol Motor Speedway, and Alex Bowman has won the poll for the race. This is Alex Bowman's first poll of the 2024 season as well. For a driver that everyone talks about saying they should lose their ride, people saying he doesn't deserve the ride and opportunity, he puts a shot in the arm and gets his first pole of the season. This is really huge for Alex Bowman. They've qualified hit or miss throughout the year so far for the 48 team. This is the best we can do it considering this is a cutoff race. They've been really strong in the first round of the playoffs so far. The Hendrick cars look really, really strong. And this is huge for Alex Bowman. I think this is also his fifth career NASCAR Cup Series pole as well. The 48 team showed some really good speed in practice, and I think they're going to have a really good chance and opportunity to get their second win of the season. This is huge for Bowman. Big confidence for this team. The 48 team looks really strong. Remember, they got a top five here in the spring. They had good speed in practice. I do think Alex Bowman's going to have a really strong chance and a really strong opportunity to potentially get a second win in 2024. Great speed, a big shot in the arm, and a huge confidence booster for the 48 team going into tomorrow night's race at Bristol Motor Speedway. So congratulations to Alex Bowman on getting the pole for this weekend's race at Bristol. So now we'll talk about all the notable drivers in qualifying and talk about some of the other drivers that did not make the final round. So Alex Bowman starts on the pole. Kyle Larson qualifies second. I thought Larson had the pole, to be honest with you, but really good job for Larson. Starting on the front row, comes into straight 26 points above the cutoff line. A really good day for Larson. Really good speed in practice. Had the best car on the 25 to 30 lap average. Larson was extremely good on the long run. I expect Larson to have a really good chance and opportunity to get the win tomorrow night. Looking for his fifth win of the season, trying to become the first driver to do that. That this year, Larson starts second. Good job for Larson. Been one of the best qualifiers in the field. His average start is really incredible. I think it's under like eighth place, if I'm not mistaken. So he continues to put up great performances in qualifying. William Byron qualifies third. Hendrick in general, one, two, three in qualifying. Very impressive, William Byron speed. This team's had good speed so far in the first round. Just had a little bit of unluckiness. Go back to Wax Lim. He had the issue with Brad Keselowski. He'll be starting third. Good job for William Byron. Mark Jr. qualifies fourth. A huge shot in the arm for this 19 team. They have been qualifying well. The question is, can they execute in the race? That's going to be the big key thing for Truex because they had some good speed on the long run, especially. The Joe Gibbs racing cars were set up for the long run. They look really good. Truex has not been great at this track, but this is huge for him because he make up a lot of points tomorrow. He'll be starting in fourth. Good job for Martin Truex Jr. Chase Briscoe qualifies fifth. Another solid qualifying run for Chase Briscoe. He formed really good at Watkins Glen. Unfortunately, got crashed at Atlanta. A good day for Chase Briscoe. He's been historically really good at qualifying at Bristol. He'll be starting the top five. Good job for Chase Briscoe. Chris Rebell qualifies sixth. Thought he was going to have a chance to the pole, to be honest with you. Good point save, though, nonetheless, for him. He'll be starting up front. I do think that that 20 team is going to have a shot. Bell almost won this race last year and had one of the fastest cars in the spring here. He'll be starting in sixth. Good job for Chris Rebell. Carson Ospar qualifies seventh. Again, this 77 team continues to impress me. Carson Ospar's had like three or four races or something like that this year where they've qualified in the top 10. I remember them qualifying in the front row at Darlington. They said that lap wasn't great and it's still qualifying inside the top 10. Very impressive for Carson. He'll be starting seventh tomorrow evening. I expect that him to be really strong considering last race in the summer. He was very good here. Ran top five in the 42 car. I think he could have an outside shot of getting his first career win. Danny Hamill qualifies safe. Not as good as I think he was hoping for, but at least he'll have a chance and opportunity to make up stage points. I think he will have a chance and opportunity to get the win, though, because he's been historically very good at Bristol. He'll be starting in eighth. Good job for Denny Hamlin. Corey LaJoy qualifies ninth. Shout out to Corey LaJoy. I think maybe the standout of this round in all honesty. You know, Corey LaJoy was announced today. We already talked about this on the channel earlier. He won't be back in the seven car after this weekend. He'll be in the 51 car starting next week, and his future is a little bit in question at the moment. So to qualify this well and have this kind of speed, great job for Corey LaJoy. This is a huge shot in the arm for this team. First time two Spire cars have qualified inside the top 10. Great job for Corey. He'll be starting ninth. And Chase Elliott qualifies 10th. Well, basically, he didn't get as high as his other teammates, so qualifying a top 10. Hendrick is the only organization that had all their cars in the final round. Very impressive for the Hendrick organization as a whole, which isn't a surprise or shock. Chase starting 10th just needs to have a solid night tomorrow night. He'll be starting 10th. Good job for Chase Elliott. 
So now let's take a look at some of the notable drivers that did not make the final round. Bubba Walls, starting 11, just missed the final round of qualifying. I'm telling you, this 23 team had really good speed in practice, especially on the 10 to 15 to 20 lap average. I think Bubba's going to have a chance and an opportunity to maybe get a top 10. He's been kind of hit or miss at this track in the past, but I do think Bubba will have some good speed. Ross Chassin, starting 12th. Good job for Ross Chassin. Honestly, some really solid pace and speed from the number one organization. I do expect that Ross Maybe a little hit or miss in this race, but he had a great run last week at Watkins Glen. He'll be starting 12th. Ty Gibbs starting 13th. A little disappointing considering how fast he was in practice. He was really good on the long run. I do think he'll get up there by the end of the night, but he's a driver that desperately needs to run really good, and he's going to have a lot of work to do tomorrow night. He'll be starting in 13th. Ryan Priest, solid qualifying speed. He'll be starting 14th. Tyler Reddick. Going to have some work to do tomorrow night. He's starting 15th. He's still in a solid enough position where I think he can make it to the next round. But this first round has not gone as well as I think he was hoping for. He'll be starting in 15th. Chris Buescher won last week's race. He's starting in 19th position, 17th position, excuse me. Joe Logano starting back in 20th. Ryan Blinney qualified very disappointingly. He's starting back in 22nd position. Brad Zosky's car was set up for a high wear race, which obviously we haven't had that at this point. He'll be starting in 23rd. Kyle Busch starting all the way back at 29th. I do think that Kyle Busch will have the pace and speed to get up there by the end of the race, but I don't know if he'll be a contender for the victory. And then you got Harrison Burton and Daniel Suarez starting way back in the field. So those are the drivers in qualifying. What's the big thing to watch out for? Well, unfortunately, unlike last time where we had a lot of tire wear, there is no fall off whatsoever. So I do expect this race to play out a lot more like the fall race was in 2023, where it's going to be very difficult to pass. I do expect a lot of long green flag runs. It may not be the greatest race out there. I do think it'll be okay, because they do have the intermediate package for this race, and usually the intermediate package puts on good racing at these types of tracks. But realistically, I'm not expecting the most exciting race. I hope I'm wrong and we get some tire wear. But if tire wear doesn't come into play like I don't think it's going to come in, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get the most exciting race. I do expect the Joe Gibbs racing cars like Denny Hamlin, Chris Bell, Mark Trix Jr., and Ty Gibbs to run up front. And the Hendrick cars, Kyle Larson, Alex Bowman, William Byron, and of course, Chase Elliott, I think will all be up front. Some of the guys on the cutoff line, like Keselowski, I do expect to get up there contending. I think there's going to be a lot of big-name drivers moving up to the field, and I think this race is going to be very interesting to see how it plays out tomorrow evening. So, that is going to be for it for reactions in NASCAR Cup Series qualifying from Bristol Motor Speedway. I want to thank guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, the notifications on, so if I win a video, it does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support my patron as well. Links are below that, and comment your thoughts below on today's episode. Where are your thoughts on NASCAR Cup Series qualifying? Let me know below. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and congratulate Alex Bowman on picking up the poll. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Later tonight on the channel of NASCAR Xfinity Series reactions to the Xfinity Series race, we're also going to have this SVG video, depending on how he performs at Bristol. Then tomorrow on the channel, we'll have the starting lineup video for the Bass for Shops Night race at Bristol, and we're also going to have the Cup Series race view from Bristol, and then also we'll have the 2025 NASCAR Silly Scene predictions on Sunday, and then you're not only going to get one, but two news videos on Monday, because a lot of news has come out over the course last four or five days that I want to discuss. Also got other content, maybe Haley Deacon video drop in the future as well that might be coming so anyways like i said i want to thank you guys for watching today's episode and i'll see you guys next time for more great awesome nascar content and other motorsports content on the channel like this take care everybody